let's create a flipbook of humanity's evolution. And let me be upfront here and say right off the bat that this is going to be somewhat underwhelming. And that's because I'm starting all the way back at the beginning of life on Earth. Now, of course, we don't know exactly what the first life form would have looked like. Perhaps some self-replicating strand of RNA or some kind of oily blob of amino acids. But one thing that we can say with certainty is that it would have been very, very small. So small that even these little dots are wildly oversized compared to where we're going to end up. But in the interest of having something to look at, these tiny dots will do. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to be drawing our entire evolutionary history, from these single-celled organisms all the way to a modern human, and it's a long journey. Life has been kicking around on this planet for somewhere in the ballpark of 4 billion years, give or take a couple weeks, so each page in this flipbook is going to represent 100 million years. Right now we're at 400 million years worth of evolution, and all life on Earth is prokaryotic. Rudimentary single-celled specks, archaea and bacteria, not typically the types of critters we might imagine in our family tree, but everyone's got to start somewhere. So, if I'm covering 4 billion years worth of evolution, and each page is 100 million years, that will net out at 40 total pages in the flipbook. Which admittedly is not a huge amount of frames for this kind of thing, but I'm not really a great animator, and I've already disclaimed that this is going to be underwhelming. Anyway, we're about a billion years into the timeline, a quarter of the way to humanity, and life is still only single-celled. Photosynthesis is evolving around this time, which may or may not be within our direct ancestry, but all these newfangled photosynthesizing microbes are spitting out so much oxygen it's causing an enormous extinction event. Let's be thankful our ancestors were able to tolerate all that O2, and maybe we'll even be able to utilize it a few, uh, billion years later. Okay, here we are at two billion years, we're halfway done, and this is actually where a major evolution occurs. It's so significant that I'm going to bust out a slightly larger micron pen. One prokaryote is swallowed by another, but instead of being digested, the two form a symbiotic relation, resulting in an entirely new organism, the eukaryote. It's thought that this event occurred only once in history, so every life form alive today that's not like bacteria owes thanks to this freak accident. This is a huge step towards complex life and will facilitate many new life forms. Uh, okay, we're still just microbes. The Earth is still without any plants, animals, fungi. Just single cells. But just wait. Wait for it. There, do you see? Something very important is happening. Multicellularity. That means things are actually going to pick up. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to your great 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 dot 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 great grandmother. A squirmy, wormy little guy. A chore date, in fact. Your mom's a chore date. That's actually true. Anyway, we are officially in Animalia territory. And hey, I'm finally getting to actually draw stuff now, so that's fun. This is actually a really significant time, the Cambrian Explosion. This period sees a huge diversification of large, complex life forms, including this guy here, who is among the first vertebrates. Backbones will turn out to be very useful. Flash forward a hundred million years, and we're now this little shallow water fish. Just about ready to make the jump from the ocean to dry land, evolving into an amphibian, I suppose. Oh, never mind. I guess we skipped past amphibians and landed at reptiles. Sadly, we've branched away from the dinosaur lineage, but those guys are overrated anyway. And here we go, mammalia! This is an early mammal, likely still laying eggs, so that's a little weird. But we're probably warm-blooded and producing milk, so there's that mammalian goodness. Okay, we've shrunk down a bit now, just a shrew-like little critter, but I think we know where this is going. Monkeys, then apes, then upright apes, cavemen. Okay, let's see it. Oh, we're actually just done. The transition from shrew to human took around the same amount of time as the jump from fish to bony fish. Huh. Alright, well, let's see this thing in action. Wow. Even with the disclaimer, that's still somehow disappointing. Hmm. It really makes you appreciate just how long life was stuck in its single-celled adolescence. Pretty much every life form we're familiar with, mammals, fish, trees, fungus, chickens, 
They're all basically newcomers on the scene. Animalia as a category of life only goes back 650 million years, which, yeah, is a long time, but compared to how long life has been around, it's like 16%. But here's the scary part. It's estimated that about a billion years from now, the sun's luminosity will have increased to the point that it boils away the oceans and basically kills all life. That means there's only 10 more pages left in this flipbook. It took us so long to get here, and now the show's almost over. Then again, human civilization is only about 10,000 years old. A billion more years is loads of time to figure our future out. Just gotta keep the extinction events at bay until then. But hey, thanks for watching this video. Sorry it wasn't more interesting. Should I have picked a smaller time increment than 100 million years? It's possible. Would that have been a lot more work? Yeah, that's... yeah, obviously. That's why I didn't do it. Please like and subscribe.